Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome back. This week, I feel very honored that to have Harold Lemon from the famous Harold Lemon Singers with me up here for an interview. Harold, thank you so much for making this possible. Thanks for the opportunity. My pleasure. Harold, it's you know this this record got it's it's a kind of cult record, and I got it, and there are hardly any information regarding the group and especially you as the group's leader. So I'm, I feel very honored that we can go into this and discuss this, discuss this a little bit. Okay, thank you. So Harold, how did everything start for you? How, was, how did you grow up? How did you get into music? Uh, my music career began years and years ago, like 65 years ago. 70 years ago, <laughs> I started playing piano when I was like five or six years old. I learned on my own. And my family music background was my father played the guitar, my grandfather played the piano, my aunts played the piano. And uh, I'm from a musical family. I can give you some of the history of my background as far as my music is concerned. First of all, my grandfather was the uh, brother of Barry Gordy Sr. So I'm a part of the Gordy family. And Barry Gordy is my family. So I've been with the Gordy family all my life, naturally. <laughs> and uh, Bishop Morton, Paul Morton, you familiar with Paul Morton? No, uh, I'm not. Oh, uh, he's, he's a famous gospel singer and a, and a minister. He has many recordings. I'm a part of the Morton family. And uh, I also sang with Maddie Moss Clark and the Clark, Maddie Moss Clark, who was the mother of Clark sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my history goes way back. I began my music career in kindergarten, believe it or not. I played the clarinet. And when I got to junior high school, I played the trumpet. When I got to high school, I played the trombone in the marching band. I began taking uh, classical piano lessons at the age of 12. And uh, I had my first playing job at the age of 14 at a little storefront church in Detroit. And uh, I was making big money, so I thought at the time. <laughs> and uh, my first recording was in the early 60s. We recorded 245 RPM record, uh, No Way to Love, and God has done so much for me. And these were on the Hob record label. And on those recordings, uh, they featured James Cleveland and on the, uh, and also uh, Billy Preston, who I met at the time. So those are my first recording experiences. My first LP I recorded with was Savoy Records, uh, Useful Trail for God, and that was in the early 70s. So from, from Savoy, you made your first record, I think it was 1966, 1967, around that time. And yes. then you got into uh, Stax Records or the sub-label Gospel Truth. How did that happen? How did you get signed? What's the story behind that? Uh, I had an occasion to meet uh, uh, Roger Clark. I think it's his name, Roger Clark. And I told him that I wanted, we had a group and we wanted to make some recordings, of course, in the LPs. So he heard the group and uh, he had the opportunity to sign us to the recording label. So that was... Uh, Message for today on the Gospel of Truth. That was in 1972. And in 1973, we recorded another LP entitled I Am Determined. That was in 1973. So the reason the last recording of seasons was recorded in 1977 on the uh, Gospel Roots label, part of TK Records. So we just transitioned from that point on. 
So, so how was your experience with with gospel truth? The label didn't last so long. It had some great artists on it. So, uh, how how was that? The feeling with with the other groups at at Stax at around that time? Uh, I didn't have so much interaction with the other groups, but the Hoover based in Detroit, and the Stax was in Memphis, of course. And uh, my music career was kind of spotted because. Uh, Early on in my career, musical career, I got married. In fact, I got married in 1970. I've been married 53 years now. And my wife and I had four children. So at the time, I realized that I could not travel and promote the recordings as most artists do because I had my first priority was taking care of my family and securing the financial future. So I ended up getting a job in civil service, which I worked for like 30 years. And uh, then I got another job in civil service, worked for an additional 10 years. So now I'm fully retired and I'm playing for the first Christian church in Florida. Uh, when I stopped recording, I, uh, I, in fact, I was hired to play for the Cousin Rope at this church in 1964, I think, and I played for them. I was a musician and minister of music for the Pleasant Road Baptist Church for like 42 years. So that, so that was the extent of my musical participation during that time. And since so, I came, when I, moved, when I moved to Florida, I had decided that I had retired from playing <laughs> for churches. <laughs> But a friend of mine belonged to a church down here and she told me they needed a musician one Easter Sunday. And I agreed to play for that one Easter Sunday. And I'm still there here today. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that so, I think that you don't finish, you don't give up playing and serving the Lord musically until God says so. So I'm still at it. That's brilliant. So between 1973 and your last recording of 1977, there's a span of years in between. Was there a reason you didn't record between 1973 and 1977? Uh, I guess it's a period of time. At that time, I decided to complete college and get my degree. So I was really working full time and I was going to school part time and I was supporting my family and I was playing for the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. So that's that was the extent of my involvement and that took up most of my time. And then so, again, uh, uh, two of the members of my group uh, passed, Orrin Williams and William Garrett. In the meantime, they had passed, so they were no longer with us. And Esther, mm -hmm. Evangelist Esther Smith, I don't even heard of her or not. She went out on her own. She has made a number of recordings. So that makes sense. That's that end of my recording career. So I've been just enjoying all the other young people coming up nowadays. <laughs> Um, so let's get back to, I think, your most famous record, which uh, we've talked a little bit earlier on, Seasons from 1977. So as far as the liner notes are concerned, you wrote and arranged each and every track on, on this record. Is that correct? Yes. You did yes. a brilliant job. Thank you. Thank you. For that record, I did, as opposed to what, after I completed the other two recordings, I thought I would go to like middle of the road, sing more message songs, design towards glorifying, expressing God's love, you know, in a more contemporary sense. That's why most of the songs on that were considered contemporary songs. So whenever I feel down, I put on this record. It gives oh, wow. me so much joy. You have no idea what this gospel record means to me. Really, whenever I'm feeling not good, this record lifts me up. Well, you have no idea how that makes me feel with you saying <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an absolutely outstanding record. For example, the song You Are Somebody, oh, that's yes. so beautiful. Is there a, a favorite song you have on this record? 
Uh, let me see. Uh, you are, I think, I think you are somebody one of the favorite ones. <laughs> it's been a yeah. while. Yeah, don't worry. Hold on, please. Uh, I have a copy here. <laughs> you are somebody, and uh, for for the children, I love that. I, I, that's one of my favorite ones for the children. And we need love. This, you know, this, all the songs have an individual message. You know, there's a season, of course. You know, that's biblical. And Esther Smith was doing a brilliant job on this record. Absolutely great. Oh, she's an exceptional singer. She is a, a fantastic singer. She's just awesome. And this whole combination of the group that works so perfectly together. It's unbelievable. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Do you remember when this picture was taken? Uh, it was taken around that time. We went to a photographic studio and uh, we uh, uh, posed for that picture and had professional photographer, of course. And a person from the recording company came and kind of directed that session, you know. And we had decided what we would wear, and we decided what we would wear for the back of the cover too. You know, a little formal, and then back as, as you know, a bit more relaxed. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you're, up on it. you're up on it. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm over. I'm so over the moon. The first time I've heard this record, this was like, oh my god! It's it lifts me up. I, I can only recommend everybody if you're in a bad mood. This wow. uh, record lifts you up. It's it's uh, very very meaningful. Do you what do you remember from the recording session of Seasons? Was there a special moment? Uh, yeah. Well, what what was unique about that recording is that they recorded the music track in Memphis, then they brought the track back to Detroit, and then we, we recorded over the music track. So that was a new experience for us. We didn't have to travel to Memphis to do that. And as you were arranging the music, were you happy with the uh, results which came uh, back to Detroit? I was because uh, Lester Smell was the main musician on the recording. Uh, he had he incorporated the Memphis horns, the Memphis sound. So that was unique. That was a great experience for me <laughs> to have the yeah. Memphis sounds with back of us now. Yeah, it gives it gives the ex, it gives the record or the music an extra lift. Let me put it that way, a more okay. joyful, okay. more right. joyful tune in, in in all of this. It was so, it was uh, different from the traditional, you know, gospel piano, organ, and drums. <laughs> so we stepped out a little bit. So we were always we were ahead of our time when we recorded those records. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. And you are aware how expensive this record is now? Uh, I have no idea. No idea. I know it's, it's a lot more than it was then, back then. But back then, I thought that was uh, quite a bit, you know. So the, the, the yeah, so it's, it's around $200 if you... <laughs> yeah. If you find a copy, it's around $200. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And people totally love it. And I, I wish there would be a reissue of this record because it's so expensive. And I think many people who are into gospel and soul music, they would love to hear that record. Do you plan or is somebody in contact with you about reissuing this record to make it more available? You know, I have had no contact with the company since that time. But I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I've seen some of my records online that were high price, you know, for sale, you know, and I was kind of surprised at that. I, I've just been totally out of the music, that music feel, you know. I need mm -hmm. to get back into it, as you say, that people, I look online, people that are interested in it and that love the music. I say, wow, but way back then, you know, because way back then, there were no, uh, I think there were no CDs at the time. But then again, you know, with nowadays with the social media and all the other technology, means of hearing music you know it's, it's amazing it's amazing yeah and many people go back to vinyl tell me about it i heard that i, I, I have quite a few vinyls left you know and i hate i sold most of my records you know i have a few copies left but i sold most of mine you know 
But I have some yeah, copies, I have some copies that are not open yet, you know. So wow, that's that's beautiful because most of the time uh, you find the records with a cutout, so that means it has a discount mark. Right. Right. Yeah. Was it back in the day? Was it a, was it a success? Was it locally played? Do you have any information about that? Uh, you know what? I was in, in the music field. I was kind of naive. I just put the record out there. I went about my business. I didn't follow through and pursue it. You know? So I just left up to the company to promote it and uh, keep track of the sales. You know, and that was my down. <laughs> of that, right? I, I did. I was excited when I went to. I was in New York. Uh, and then somebody called me and said, "Our liquor was uh, had five stars on the Billboard magazine." And then it was a message for today, and I was excited about that. You know, I had no idea. Yeah, that's Other awesome. than that, I was so busy pursuing my career and raising my family and playing in church. I just, I didn't follow through. It's a story I very often hear when I do interviews with people is um, the not so good side on the music business is when they said, I just got out of high school and they offered me a contract and it wasn't in my best interest. It wasn't the best interest of the management or the record label. Did you experience this as well? You know what? I, I probably did. I probably was not aware of that aspect of the music business, you know. Because when you're young, you're so excited to get a contract and whatever the monetary is, you think that's what it should be, and you left it up to them. You know, you're just happy to sing and record, have it play on the radio, you know. We were kind of young, young and naive at the time, you know. I mean, now these musicians are more sophisticated, and they're more in tune with what the financial aspects are, you know, and the legal aspects are. Yeah, especially as you are the, the songwriter uh, for, for these albums, you should get at least royalties for, for the songwriting. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, because as far as I know, I think you are somebody and For the Children has been reissued as a single. That's nice. Like, I think two, two, two years or so ago. Are you aware of that? No. 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 Okay. No. Because it was such a, such a smash in in the clubs and and everywhere, and people loved it. So it has been reissued on a forty five. Wow. These two tracks. Yeah. Same, same same company. Um. No, it's it's a different a different company, a different <laughs> company. But I can I can send you I can send you some informations about this if you want. Please, so um, please do maybe that. Can, sorry. Please do that. I of course will do that, Howard. I'm I'm getting you all all the informations you want because people love these two tracks and they they listen to it and say, "Wow, what's that?" And so <laughs> these these two tracks have been released on on a 45 single. Oh, just, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting <laughs> and exciting and exciting at the same time. Yeah, it's it's absolutely so. I was I'm surprised that you're not not aware of this, but um, I, I sent you some information, so maybe you can get hold of one of these singles. I would really love for you to get that. That's a reflection on me. <laughs> That's not a good <laughs> reflection, but thank you for that. Of course, of for course. putting a fire under me. <laughs> <laughs> a well deserved fire, well deserved fire, Howard. So uh, gospel music and especially soul music is getting kind of rebirth. Yes. And people are really getting into uh, gospel music That's again. Um, and also hip hop artists are trying to uh, sample right. the recordings for, from gospel music. So there's, there's an interest for this. And especially um, I made an own video uh, about this record. I also send you the link. People just ask me, where can I get this record? Where can oh, I get wow. the music? Because I loved it so much. Wow. And send yeah. me the, the two songs that you're referring to also. Yeah, I, I will send you I will send you the video link. I will send you I will send you everything. No, don't worry. I I'll appreciate that. that. I appreciate that so much. Because I have more you're years more behind than... me than I have ahead of me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I so I'll make sure you get them. <laughs> I'll make sure you get them right after the interview. Yeah, because right uh, I'll I'll be I'll be 84 this year. Wow. You're looking I, great. I thank God for my health. I thank God for my family. And you know, I used to love God. I'm happy, you know. I have I have grandchildren. My grandchildren need to know 
about this, you know. They they will. They they sure will. <laughs> I'll send you. I will. I will send you the links, and you will. You will see that that, that it's kind of really appreciated. Well, I appreciate you so much for that. I appreciate you a million for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what do you hope listeners can take away from your music? Uh, that just uh, my music is a message of God's love in a contemporary setting. You know that they can relate to. I want them to be inspired to live a, live a good, positive life, you know, knowing that God loves them. And only we can make it in this world, during these times, is that we have faith in God. Not that you have to be religious or whatever, just you know, know that there's a higher power than you. Know, than you, you know. That's what keeps me going. I wake up every day thanking God for another day to get it right. <laughs> What is your favorite song you ever recorded? I think my favorite song was the, one of the, the first song I recorded, No Way to Love. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a song I recorded on, on the Hobbs label on a 45. And that song was recorded since that time by the voice of the tabernacle with James Cleveland and my cousin Marvin Gaye. He recorded that song also. It was not on one of his hit records, but he recorded it. It's online, you know, with the love. I love Marvin Gaye, What's Going On album. Oh, yeah. But that's that's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, did the two of you ever meet? I think so, if he was your cousin. Yes, yes, we did. Years ago, yeah. I went some of his performances at, 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 at venues in Detroit at the time. So you, you've mentioned in the beginning that um, after the uh, recording of this album, if I understood you correctly, uh, some members died of the group. Is that is that correct? Yes. William Garrett, he passed. Uh, before that recording, there was another young lady, Aurelia William. She was on the other recordings. She passed. But the young lady singing in front, that's my cousin, Joyce Moore. That one, yes. And then the one standing is Evangelist Esther Smith, who, who's recording. Yeah, the lady, young lady, and she's recording today. Yeah. Wow. And, and William here, he passed. So do you have some plans on further recordings? Like you, you said, you are now uh, working in, in, in church and playing music. Are you planning to record some of that music you are doing? Uh, I thought about it. I, I wouldn't record. I would have other artists record it. But nowadays, the music instrumentation has changed so much. Every time you see a keyboard playing, you see a bunch of computers. And, you know, as, as out of my generation. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, listen, so I know if they get some of my song, they can really do a, a, a good updated current job with the music. I think my music is pretty timely, you know. The message mm. has changed. The message is still the same. Yeah, the message I think will always be the same. It's about God and love and peace and joy. Forever. So, Perpetual. And so, I've, I've, experienced, I've experienced so many losses of musicians and singers that I grew up with, like the Edward Hawkins, Walter Hawkins, Andre Crouch, James Whelan, Rand Stallion, those singers. You know, so many that I grew up with, they're no longer with us. But I do keep in contact with the Clark Sisters and the, the Wine and the Singers and the Wardens. You know, you probably hear about them, they're going. And Kirk Franklin has really done a good job of keeping gospel on the map in the forefront, even though there are criticisms about his music and style. But then again, you know, he's reaching young people. <laughs> Who we deserve, you know. I will always remember James Cleveland in the film of Aretha Franklin, Amazing Grace. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Those are those are the good old days. <laughs> That's what I grew up with. But this is such an amazing experience, uh, being back there and the quality of the singers and how engaged they were, and, and you could really feel oh, that yes. they felt oh. the love and the joy, and they're totally with it, with the spirit. And, and that's that's, I'm getting goosebumps. 
That's what it's all about. I remember when I started playing for my first church when I was like 14 years old. I would catch two buses go on the east side of Detroit to play for the storefront church. And once the church was over with, I would walk up to what they call Hastings Street. And that's where T.L. Franklin's church was. I remember going there one time and I heard Rita Franklin for the first time singing Never Grow Old. And before she started recording, that was a uh, an amazing experience that I treasure to this day, not knowing how big she would get, but that was way back then. She was a teenager. It was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I, I totally believe that that must have been a stellar performance to watch and, oh, and yeah. see what later oh. came out of her as being the queen of, of soul. And oh, yes. Yeah. And I think Amazing Grace is the most sold gospel album ever. So yeah, I think it was, yes. So I, I was at that session, by the way, that recording session. And I had a chance yeah. to go meet the go see Billy Preston again. It was amazing. I was, I was at that church and it was a good experience. Awesome experience. History making. I didn't realize at the time that it was history making, but as we, as it turned out, it was history making. Amazing. Yeah, sure. So reflecting on your journey so far, what advice would you give to young artists getting into music business, getting into soul and gospel music? What advice would that be? First of all, they would have to uh, follow your heart, you know, whatever's in your heart, whatever you feel. In regards to your writing songs, singing songs, recording songs, get the financial part, the legal part in place first. Because it's, it's a, like they say, it's a jungle out there. You know, it can be taken advantage of. You know, you know, and uh, you know, if your heart, if your heart is in it. It won't be like it won't be a task or a job. You just do it for the love of doing it. You know. So that's my advice: is to follow your heart and you know, and keep God first, and don't give up. Pursue it. You never know what the future is going to hold. Here I am, 50, 60 years later, people still. <laughs> Listening to myself on the music, you know, never dreamed this at this time in life. I just kind of put it aside, you know. Things are still happening. Once it's out there, it's out there, you know. Yeah, and it will be remembered. Yeah, you know, I, I realize that once it's out there on the internet or YouTube or wherever it is, I, I don't put it out there. I got some of the companies put it out there, but once it's out there, it's out there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So how would you like the Howard Lemon singers to be remembered? I like for, I like us to be remembered as a young group who tried to uh, convey the message of God's love through song in a contemporary fashion. A group who tried to live the words that we sing about. Mm. As I mentioned earlier, you wrote, I think, every song on this album, for example. Um, when you walk through the creative process, how do you write a song? For me, this is just like I never could imagine myself writing a song and putting music to it. For me, this is just a miracle if somebody can write a song, put lyrics to it. How do you do that? Uh, most of them tell me I write. It, it, it comes at one time, all at once, all the music and the words. You know, I would, I would play a chord, I play a, a passage of music that I like, and I would put the words to it. Or the words would come, and I would just start playing. You know, it, 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 it just comes all together. It's hard to explain. Sometimes you think of a song that wakes you up at night, you know, and it's in your mind. You need to go write it down and, and, and make some notes so you won't forget it, you know. That's how, that's, how, that's how it worked for me. Wow. Was your mother a big influence on getting into the music business in getting or getting uh, a musical education? Yes, she was. She encouraged me every step of the way. Because when I was a child, uh, my, the only exposure I had to the piano was at my grandmother's house, grandmother, uh, my grandfather's house, at John Forty. And I would get a chance to go and play this old, large, upright piano. And I would just start playing. I started playing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, you know. 
And then later on, I would hear records by the old artists like Rosie Wallace and Raymond Rath with his things and care about this. I would sit at the piano and play the record and duplicate the music that I heard on the keyboard. That's how I started learning it that year. And then I started playing at church. My mother realized at the time, she said, she told me, say, Howard, your father wanted to learn to play the guitar, but his parents couldn't afford it. So I didn't want you to go through that. So she realized that she wanted me to have piano lessons. So she bought me a piano. She didn't have a lot of money, but she found a way to buy me a piano, a brand new piano. And then I started taking classical piano lessons. Uh, and I took classical piano lessons for a few years, you know. And then I still had my gospel roots, you know, the, <laughs> the gospel part as well. Yeah. So I really played back here, you know. So that's how it began. So you could have easily done, uh, um, I think easily, but you could have gotten to a um, very gory and said, hey, I want to become a soul singer. So, but you went the gospel route. Was that the reason because of your roots or what was the reason you didn't go and try to audition at Motown? Here's the story. <laughs> the Gordy family, the Motown part of the Gordy family, they you know, specialized, of course, in secular music. So Barry Gordy, he established Motown and uh, all his artists were secular artists, of course, you know. But Barry, but my grandfather, John Gordy, he was a, he was a minister and a superintendent in the Church of God in Christ. So that part of the family was always totally religious, Pentecostal. We weren't allowed to hear or play secular music. So that was a, that was a divide. So I grew up on the Gordy, on the gospel side of the Gordy family. So we, we were always in church, you know. We didn't, we didn't cross over. Until later on, we got grown, we started appreciating it more, you know. So we did, we did, we, we did, we're allowed, we were allowed to attend the, the Motown with you, you know. It and didn't kids, cross over. <laughs> and my kids, you know, they met the Jackson Five before they were famous, you know, I went to Barry Gordy's house and they swam with the kids and we, you know, we, we were family, we're still family, we just didn't do that, you know. That's, that's absolutely brilliant. So uh, once a little step back to uh, 1977. So could you explain, you, you've had this, this record out and um, it might have a little success. So, and then what was the point where you decided I do something totally different? Uh, I, guess, I guess it wasn't a sudden decision. Once the record was out there, I just let, it, I just let the company handle it sales when that I didn't really follow up on it, you know, because I was so busy concentrating and prioritizing my family, raising my children and working and finishing college. And since we couldn't travel to promote it, I said, oh well, you know, we just let it play out. I, Which I is not the best it. thinking, but that's what happened. Yeah. And it was also the 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 way you you live you lived it and and also you loved it and you 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 made your dream come true. You have a couple of records out there; they are still remembered, they are still mm -hmm. listened to. So I would say a goal achieved. Yes, yes, that's part of my legacy for my children, for my grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Howard, do you have a message for your fans? A message, my fans, is I that I appreciate. Those of you who still remember me and still remember the group are still playing my songs. And I appreciate you and thanks a million for that. And I will begin to get more involved and follow through and see what's going on with that. <laughs> Even though that this old man is still around. <laughs> and I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying every one of them. You know, I'm enjoying the new music, the praise songs that what's going on nowadays so much out there howard thank you so much for your time and doing the interview and giving you us a little insight into your 
into your story. And I do hope to hear some uh, new music from you soon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you again for this golden opportunity to be able to share my musical history with you and the world.